Ryan Callanan was named Billabong's Athlete of the Year in 2011, but lately he's become a fish out of water with plenty of spare time. Watch surfing and watch the surf and I don't know, I'm getting a bit bored. The 19-year-old broke his right leg attempting a backside air reverse in Bali in October. Following his rehabilitation, he was back to his usual tricks in Newcastle before he returned to competition at the World Pro Junior on the Gold Coast last month. Ironically, he attempted the same move prior to his first round heat and suffered torn ligaments in his left ankle. When I was coming in, I thought I'd broken it like the other one. It felt kind of similar and like I tried to take off on a wave and it just collapsed and I was just like freaking out, just like almost crying coming in, just not again. He's expected to be out of the water for at least another few weeks, leaving him with no lead up events prior to Surfest. Despite the pressure, Callanan is looking forward to the challenge of becoming the first local to win the men's event. I went to France last year and actually got third in a six star, which is the same as what this is rated. And there was really good people in it. So, you know, I'm feeling pretty confident. Even if he's drawn against big guns such as Taj Burrow. He's a really cool guy and got, he's just so, such a good surfer and so consistent. But um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be really exciting for me. I think I wouldn't be nervous at all. Just like I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Mitchell Hughes, NBN News. Yeah, most of them will play. Yeah, um, there'll be a few, few who are just sort of carrying a few niggles that um, that won't. But generally speaking, uh, you know, most of our guys will have a game, have a run this week. From the old to the new, these are the grand plans to bring the David Madison building into the 21st century. Plans are to, uh, to, to make this an A-grade office building, top quality A-grade office building. 7,500 square metres of office space in fact, to cater for around 400 workers over six storeys and there'll be no need to bring in the bulldozers to make it happen. All it really needs is a, is a total refurb, strip out the interiors, brand new ceilings, floor, air conditioning, all new services, new carpet, there'll be nothing, you won't see anything old. There could be a new name too, What Street Commercial. The DA will be lodged with council by the end of the month, and if given the nod, the project could be a reality by June next year.
And in another move that could bring more people to the East End, Mr Stronic also has plans for vacant land along Shortland Esplanade. We'll be putting uh, about 150 apartments on that site. We are looking at an option to put a hotel there, a top quality hotel, not a, a drinking hotel, an accommodation hotel. An application for the $25 million development is expected to be lodged by March. Tyson Cottrell, NBN News. Manufacturers that are exposed to the international competition and the high Australian dollar will really be struggling at the moment. Well, through 2012, they're going to have some real challenges. She was pivotal in setting up the Newcastle unit here and without Di it simply wouldn't have existed. So she was wonderful. Newcastle's recent undefeated run has coincided with the return of Job Wheelhouse, but the captain isn't taking the credit. I'm wearing the armband but that doesn't really mean a great deal in this group, you know, we, we, um, we've got some really good leaders in the team. The coach believes there's a range of factors, including the growing confidence of his younger players and the influence of the English imports, Francis Jeffers and Michael Bridges. Francis is in a lot better shape than, than maybe what he was at the beginning of the season. Uh, you've got the likes of Bridgie probably, in, he feels probably in the, in the best type of fitness that he's been in. Jeremy Brockie is already celebrating after being chosen in the New Zealand squad to play Jamaica on February 29. Injury free and fitter than ever, the striker is hoping he can turn his recent two goal hauls into his first ever professional hat trick. Uh, at the end of the game obviously I was knackered uh, against Sydney but I felt that I could have gone, keep going so uh, it's always a good feeling uh, to have that and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to getting back out on the pitch. The Jets are likely to be unchanged from the side that belted Sydney unless Ali Abbas forces his way into the top 11. We know he has a lot of quality and uh, we just keep working with him and, and um, you know, it may be a case that we start with Ali. His fitness isn't an issue, he'd be probably pretty close to one of the, the fittest guys in the, in the team. With seven games to go, Newcastle is looking to take maximum points at home. We played Adelaide away, we played Brisbane away and we've played Sydney away. Uh, it, all that hard work, it sort of gets undone if we, if we sort of let our home games go.
Stadium, essentially Turton Road, Griffith Road, from Young to Monash, to to essentially, you know, assist in the pedestrian management after games and prior to games, which, as we all know, here at uh, at uh, Hunter Stadium now, that uh, that it's a big problem. It should be like hitting the jackpot. But for many these days, retirement is as hard as a hole in one. It's harder to, to keep the money coming in, whether it's really superannuation or with, with your funds that you've got. And with the alarm bells ringing, it's no wonder so many were today keen for a far from relaxing game of golf. West Walls End, the location for a shot at financial freedom. Basically, you've got uh, one shot, you can't take a practice swing. You, uh, you, you, if you miss it, it's too bad. But if you get the, uh, the hole in one, then you, you win a house. A $325,000 new home at the Sugar Valley Lifestyle Estate. The promotion aimed at over 55s, but this competition was tough. They came, they saw, but the dream was out of reach. In fact, new figures from the Australian Bureau of Statistics show most of us are waiting longer to retire. Oh, well, I live in the old house now. <laughs> the number of older workers with jobs in Australia has doubled in a decade. 73% of people aged 55 to 59 forced to stay in the workforce. But perhaps the most startling statistic is that 25% of Australians aged between 65 and 69 are still working, and most of them are full-time. It's not easy because uh, people don't realise, you know, what the expenses they've got after they retire. Imagine what it'll be like in the future. Luck, planning and a developer or two will most definitely come in handy. We'll try and do this every year and eventually we'll give one away. Nat Wallace, NBN News. It takes a unique individual to row a surfboat. Some would say tough, others would say crazy. More than 350 are at Stockton Beach this weekend for the Surf Rowers League Australian Open. So far, the boys from Mordia Lock in Victoria can lay claim to the most spectacular exit from the competition. By this morning, conditions had dropped, leaving crews with plenty of paddling to do and fewer waves to catch. Nobby's made the short trip across the harbour, but found the going a little too tough. With sweep Dean Elvin on board, Swansea Belmont's under-23s had won three straight heats going into the money rounds. But it was the state representative crew from DY who showed them how it's done as the boys from Blacksmiths bowed out before the final. My boys were a bit stiff there after winning a couple to get through to this uh, event. Uh, they're going to the, to the beer tent, mate. The under-19s from Caves Beach have some work to do as they finished well behind a dominant crew from Bulleye. The finals of all divisions will be held tomorrow.
This roadblock faced anyone wanting to visit an inmate over the weekend. Visitors and their cars were searched. Police and correctional officers looking for anything from weapons to drugs and cigarettes. Basically, any item that has the potential to be dangerous. Yesterday we found uh, a number of drugs, a small quantity of alcohol, uh, two knives. Today, most visitors did the right thing, but not this woman. There to visit her husband, police say she had prescription drugs and cigarettes hidden in her bra. They've been taken away by the police to be searched and they, they will be prohibited from entering the centre today. She was among 17 people denied entry. Plenty of visitors didn't want the attention. Police quick to chase those turning around before the checking point. The search is part of an ongoing operation across prisons in northwest New South Wales to reduce contraband, but by authorities' own admission, it's tough to bust. Contraband will always find its way into a correctional centre. We're putting in positive measures in conjunction with the police through the northwest region to reduce that amount. Anyone found with contraband faces a life ban from visiting correctional centres. Lauren Bladwell, NBN News. We are really grateful for the contribution that Mike made and so we're happy to have the fundraiser to, to cover those costs and he certainly did do his best. What most community members are, are doing is, is trying to channel their emotions in a positive way. In NBN News tomorrow night, more gold from the vault as we look back at 50 years of NBN television and we laugh with the comedians who made NBN's Tonight Show's the hottest ticket in town. That's in the news tomorrow night. He's a great player, he's one of the best players in the league, Darius, and um, yeah, it's certainly great to have him at our club. And, um, you know, when he showed tonight, he showed some, some, some past tonight. Written off as title contenders just a few weeks ago, the Jets continue to edge their way up the A-League ladder. We're looking like a really good team, a team that's going to challenge for the for the title and uh, hopefully we can win a few more games and stay in this top six and uh, you know anything can happen from here. Last night they welcomed the heart to town and it was the visitors who controlled the opening but the Jets created the best chances. Jeremy Brocky put the home side in front, combining with Tarek Elrich for the second straight week. Francis Jeffers went agonisingly close to adding a second just two minutes later, before Elrich got in on the act, only to be denied by Clint Bolton. The Jets bench had plenty to smile about heading into half-time. Ryan Griffiths was the one wearing the grin shortly after the restart. Newcastle was in complete control when Jeffers made way for Michael Bridges as the Englishman broke an even longer drought. Bolton then denied him a spectacular second. The Jets now head to Perth to face the glory, an away game which has rarely been a happy one. It's going to be a tough trip, whether they won or lost last night, it's probably a little bit irrelevant, but um, we need to keep focusing on what we do well.
Orica's ammonia plant silent again, a week after restart procedures began. The latest problem, a mechanical fault in part of the plant which removes carbon dioxide. So the positive is for us is that we've got a group of people in that plant, they're making sure they're dotting every I and crossing every T in making sure that plant's starting up safely. It's still unknown when that will be, but every week that the plant remains closed is costing Orica $4 million. We haven't talked about time frames all the way through. Our focus has been on starting the plan up safely and we'll continue to make that our focus. The restart process has been plagued by setbacks since it was scheduled to begin on December 15. First, it was pushed back to the 3rd of January due to mechanical problems. A week later came another halt in production as lightning sparked a fire in one of the plant's vents. Two days later, another fire, this time caused by static electricity. The process was again delayed on the 24th of January, Orica citing a problem with a compressor. The plant was shut down down last August due to a hexavalent chromium leak. Stockton residents say it's time it was closed for good. I guess once again it shows that it's an ageing, ailing plant. It um, shows that the systems that they have seem to be not able to cope with what they're trying to do, so that's a concern. Environment Minister Robin Parker says the restart is an operational concern and that the EPA continues to closely monitor Orica during the process. Lauren Bladwell, NBN News. This was Greg Combe last week. Greg, have you <coughs> broken a promise by not funding the Glendale Transport Interchange? No, not at all. And in fact, I was working away on that. I was speaking with Greg Piper this morning about this issue. That meeting was about figures, and they don't add up. We do have uh, the guarantee of $15 million from the state government. We also have $10 million which council will provide. But they don't have the desired federal share, $25 million. Attempts for 20 have failed. Now it's just seven. NBN can reveal the member for Charlton hasn't managed to convince the infrastructure minister to disregard funding caps so it could secure $20 million for the project. And Mr Combe's now advised council to apply for just over a quarter of what it needs. Of course I'm disappointed. Greg Combe promised if all levels of government came together there would be funding for the Glendale interchange. Now he's changed his mind, he's hiding under weak excuses. At least another long-awaited project is on the move. A $5 million lift to replace Cardiff Rail Station's stairway from hell. I've got a scooter and a walker at home, but I can't bring them. Work to fix this mess is expected to take up to two years. All up, that's 16 years of commuter frustration. It's uh, hopefully the beginning of the end of a very long process. Nat Wallace, NBN News. For cancer patients needing chemotherapy, this is Treatment Central. But the Calvary Mater has been straining under the workload, with waiting times blowing out. That's a complex issue and there are many reasons. The Health Service commissioned an external review last year and the results are now in. It's supporting 21 of 24 recommendations and has set three priorities. New chemotherapy chairs at the Mater, appointing a medical oncologist at Taree's Manning Base Hospital and establishing a regional cancer centre in Tamworth. We're very confident that uh, our immediate priorities, uh, the oncologist in Taree and the chemotherapy chairs, uh, will have uh, you know, a significant impact and I think they will have a major impact. The Health Service says improvements at Taree and Tamworth will reduce strain on Newcastle. The Mart is also reviewing internal processes and is in the process of opening the new chemo chairs. The time the patients wait from the time they see a medical oncologist to the time they start their chemotherapy has been around four weeks. And we expect that by opening the four chairs, uh, we will reduce that to two weeks. As for future needs, a cancer services plan is being compiled looking to the next 10 years.
From the early 70s to the early 80s, NBN's Tonight Shows brought the golden age of variety into our living rooms, and there were always plenty of laughs. The top comedians visiting Sydney were flown to Newcastle to appear on the show and were very well looked after. Oh, it's, listen, it's lovely being in Australia. It's, it's, but you've got some funny habits, haven't you? Hey, showering every day. <laughs> and all these expressions you've got. Bonza. I asked the bloke you see that. I said, what does bonza mean? He said, a bus full of pommies going over a cliff. These were the days when it was okay to smoke on television and socialite Dita Cobb was a regular guest on the show. During the season she had a facelift but still didn't miss an appearance. In the following weeks, she wore all sorts of things to disguise the swelling, but by the end of the year, she was back to normal. And two vaudeville legends appeared together on NBN's Tonight Show one night, the late Maury Fields and Bobby Lebrun. I learned tonight that uh, nice guys finish second, and you, you know, when you want it like that guy does, you, you get aggressive. Back home after Saturday's trial against the Panthers in Port Macquarie, and the Knights were back in the spotlight. Only 17 of these players will feature in round one against the Dragons. This season really, you know, it's, it, there is really no excuses. If you know, we don't perform, then we want to find someone else that will. James McManus is confident he's already secured his spot. I thought it went well in the, the 40 minutes that I played and um, sort of had a, a, a good pre-season. It's the strongest and, and fittest and, and sharpest I've felt ever in my whole career. McManus endured a horror run with injury in 2010. 
Now the former Blues winger believes he's ready to return to rep footy. Getting back into it last year was, was really good. I got a, a whole season out last year and I, I think it was going to take me you know, a season to build back up some confidence and, uh, and some movement in my legs. Matt Hilder is simply happy to be back playing after a large cut to his head limited his appearances at the end of last season. It's all healed but there's still a lot of scar tissue there so um, I think the scar tissue is a bit, bit stiff at the moment so I'll be wearing the headgear for a while. He's also likely to play in round one, but isn't sure where. I think it'll be more than likely I'll be probably on the interchange bench to start and um, yeah, try and work my, work my way into the, into the starting side. Mitchell Hughes, NBN News. It's awesome that they have um, the Hatter Pro Junior. They just kind of chucked in the last minute, I think. And um, yeah, it's so great. They have the best 16 girls in Australia and around the world that were competing. So the competition is really high. And Hunter Cruz had the inside running, but it was the Kiwis, Sydney Siders and Central Coasters who dominated the final event of the year in the Australian Surf Rowers League. One of the highlights, Avoca's under-19s winning back-to-back -back titles. The one positive for the locals, Stockton drew high praise as the host venue. Still on the water and it was a tough day for former Swansea Belmont Ironwoman Nikki Chapman. Competing at her adopted home on the Sunshine Coast, Chapman struggled in the ski leg of the qualifying race, but a big effort in the swim saw her climb to seventh. She fell back in the pack on the board and eventually finished 15th overall. Finally to the west and it was a mixed night for our Hunter athletes at the Perth Track Classic. Laura Whaler and Pyrenees Steinert are still searching for A qualifier Olympic times, while Ben Harradine again played second fiddle to American Russ Winger in the discus. He's a fantastic competitor and to come back last throw, throw 65 metres, A qualifier. I mean, if he was a, a bad guy, I'd be angry, but he's a really nice guy to, to lose to. Mitchell Hughes, NBN News. Tim Owen was keen to get moving. You'll find, I think, there's an announcement in the next week to two about the timelines for that integrated transport approach. Two months after that comment, Newcastle is still waiting. A decision on cutting the rail line no closer, and Mr Owen isn't prepared to talk about why. Others, though, are more than happy. Transport infrastructure must be uh, for all of the Hunter region. NBN News can reveal the Newcastle MP's imminent announcement to cut the line at Woodville Junction and Hamilton sent alarm bells ringing. 
For the first time, the team is somewhat divided. It's about all of us working together. What it's really all about is money. The Premier's infrastructure fund is drying up. Robin Parker needs $45 million to fix the New England highway traffic gridlock. Other Coalition MPs also have an expensive wish list, leaving Mr Owen a bit short of cash. Peter Blackmore, the Mayor of Maitland and opponent of cutting the rail line, is head of the Hunter Infrastructure Fund. It will make a decision on who gets what and last week gave Mr Owen a chance to sell his vision. It is not on our agenda and so therefore we will not be considering anything until such times as a government announcement. And adding to Tim Owen's woes, there's now talk of a further study, this time linking the Newcastle Airport to the Newcastle CBD. We've uh, been a long-term advocate for improved options for the travellers coming to and from the airport. Nat Wallace, NBN News. February 15, 1942. After seven days of bloody battle, the Allied stronghold of Singapore falls to the Japanese. 80,000 British, Australian and Indian troops are taken as prisoners of war. Many would never return home. And I think that made a big impact on the Australian population. I've never really forgotten it. Newcastle doctor Peter Hendry survived to tell his story, but like many veterans, he does so with some hesitation. The now 96-year-old recalls being sent to the Burma Railway under the Japanese to treat those building the line. They were made to work hard, uh, unnourished, very poorly fed. I can remember them saying to me, oh Christ, doc, don't send me out again, Jeez, I can't handle it. When the death railway was finished 18 months later in 1943, Dr Hendry was taken to Changi Prison, where he says conditions were comparatively good. Changi was a home away from home. The people who lived in Changi grew gardens and they planted uh, trees, they had fruit, uh, they organised a university. Dr Hendry will speak about his time in Singapore at Newcastle City Hall from 7 o'clock tonight. Lauren Bladwell, NBN News. It's possibly the most romantic way to celebrate Valentine's Day. I now pronounce you husband and wife and Greg, I invite you to kiss your wife. Greg and Michelle Ninnis travelled to Newcastle from Port Macquarie to tie the knot, one of five couples who exchanged vows at the registry. Valentine's Day people sort of ride off a bit but now for us it's um, got an extra special meaning. There's no chance of forgetting anniversaries. Another time on a tradition, the buying of beautiful blooms for beloveds blossomed. What's catching your eye? Uh, I think some roses with some pink lilies would be the go today. Florists were frantic. Belflora alone had 500 pre-orders last night. We were here till 11 last night and we got back here at 6 in the morning. It seems it's the season for love high in the Barrington Tops. Tassie Devils are also on the prowl for that special someone. Forget the flowers, here females grow neck rolls. It's a fat deposit. Devils are a very bitey, competitive animal during the breeding season. The male will actually bite onto the back of the neck there. And a special search for romance was underway at Scenic Lodge for retirement home resident Ralph.
We've been told that if we find a mate for him, uh, the quality of life will improve definitely. So putting the call out for love on Valentine's yes, Day. Yes, we really want to find love for Ralph. Madeline McKell, NBN News. Philip Reynolds was filming a music video. when suddenly the weather put on a performance of its own. We wanted a dramatic sky, we got one all right. A trio of water spouts formed off Stockton just after 7.30pm, right in front of the camera. Three in the one day, it was really spectacular. The largest lasting more than 10 minutes. One really long thin one, and one broader one, and one that didn't make the ground, it just sort of hooked back around on itself. Conditions provided the perfect ingredients for the phenomenon. The water has to be quite warm, which it is. The other interesting thing, the air in between the surface of the water and the cloud has to be quite stable. It has to be light winds or all of the winds moving together in exactly the same direction. Last night's water spouts made for a pretty picture, but that's not always the case. In June 2010, a strong water spout made landfall at Lennox Head on the far north coast, going on to cut a path of destruction. Hopefully we don't see anything like that, but experts say keep your cameras handy. More water spouts are expected as the season changes. As that warm water gets funneled down on the east coast current from the Coral Sea, the colder air coming up from the Antarctic will start mixing. Lauren Bladwell, NBN News. Jacob Pepper is one of the Jets' quiet achievers, but his progress hasn't gone unnoticed. He's got a tremendous work ethic, but uh, I think he's also um, very capable with, with the ball as well. What we need to develop is for him to become better under pressure. The 19-year-old local junior has become a permanent fixture in the top squad since Gary Van Egmond took over. He's just happy to know his immediate future is secure. It's always been my dream to, um, to get a contract in Newcastle, you know, because I'm from here originally, so um, you know, it's just been a lot quicker than I expected. The Jets remain in negotiations with several players, including Tarek Elrich, Jeremy Brocky, and Michael Bridges. All those three players have been contributors this year, and, and um, you know we, we definitely look to, to see how we can keep them. But it's not that easy. Bridges believes he's in his best shape since arriving in Australia to play in the A League. He's definitely hoping to figure in Van Egmond's plans. The way I'm feeling, um, there's, there's no chance I'll be wanting to hang the boots up again at the end of this season. The way I'm feeling and the body's feeling, um, I want to play football as long as I can again. Bridges says this effort would have been one of the most spectacular goals of his career if it wasn't for Clint Bolton. He revealed his actual goal was all about anticipation. I've passed the ball out to Ruben and Ruben never hits the target, so it was great to see. Um, I, I, read, I read the shank <laughs> and I saw he was winding his leg up from about halfway line, so I just thought I'll take a little gamble here. Mitchell Hughes, NBN News. Back at the club where it all began, Aaron Townsend proved he still knows his way around Charlestown. The 30-year-old recently earned a place at this year's British Open, capping off a summer he describes as successful without being spectacular. I was sort of happy with how I went but without having a real, a real massive highlight. Um, and it was funny that it was so early in the year, it does feel like last season. I've had a good break now so I'm ready for this season coming up. He'll start with the Victorian PGA this weekend, play another tournament in Queensland, then head to Indonesia for the first event on the One Asia Tour. Come July, Townsend admits he'll need to adapt his game for the extreme conditions golfers often encounter in the UK. A few years ago I did play a little bit and last year I played some golf um, at St Andrews and Carnoustie in a tournament there and, and that, that was a lot of fun. I learned a lot just from that one week so it's going to be similar to that. 
If all goes according to plan, he's hoping to play the majority of his golf in Europe. I do have some options to play some events in Europe as well, like sort of around the Open and just after it. So I'll try really sort of to aim at those as well and see what happens. Mitchell Hughes, NBN News. According to Mayfield residents, if you were in the suburb at dawn yesterday, you wouldn't have missed the smell. We know people that were housebound because of the problem. We know people who were woken in fright, in the dark. The offensive odour was naphthalene, which had been admitted from the coppers plant as a result of a blocked pipe. The EPA say, Lisa Cassidy says it was very minor. She doesn't live here. We live here. We know it wasn't very minor. The fact that local residents uh, were smelling the fumes from this incident um, show that it isn't a minor incident and that it should be treated seriously. The EPA was notified of the emission two hours after it occurred by residents, not coppers. It's now investigating whether the company breached new legislation by not reporting the incident immediately. I hope that the EPA uh, alerted all licence holders to the fact that the legislation had changed and that any incident needed to be reported to them immediately um, and that doesn't seem to have been the case with this coppers incident. We're worried that the Minister doesn't have control over the EPA and the EPA are doing their own thing. The EPA has acknowledged residents' concerns, saying it's demanded a full incident report from coppers by next week as part of its investigation. Lauren Bladwell, NBN News. This is the church's message that incited a great deal of anger. Half of me said, should I put it up or should I not? And I thought, well, it's a way of getting people to discuss the issue. It certainly achieved that and more. Vandals taking to the Walls End Church with messages like sexuality is not a choice. People have got the right to, to live whatever way they like. Um, I, I'm just a little bit shocked that um, we don't have the freedom of speech just to put the traditional values up anymore. People want to react to it. The graffiti was quickly removed and the message has now been changed. The new sign is about forgiveness. It's, uh, it's addressed to the, uh, the, the vandals and uh, our vandal friends, I think the way I put it, and uh, saying that come and talk to us. Newcastle's gay community certainly has something to say. When I first saw it, I thought, joints don't make marriages, love does. Its members have condemned the graffiti attack, but are taking the opportunity to hold a peaceful protest at the church tomorrow. We're not attacking the church um, and we don't intend to attack them because they're entitled to their opinion just as we are and we respect that. Um, but I think that this is a great opportunity for the gay community and for the people that support the gay community to be able to voice their opinion. Lauren Bladwell, NBN News.
Teetering along the edge of the lane, cyclists dice with death along the narrow, winding Bereki Road. Cycle paths end at the Elibana boat ramp and Crowdus Bay Park, and some fear their end may also be near if the missing link isn't built. I have had uh, truck drivers in particular come quite close to me. Uh, I don't know if they like to play chicken or not, but they do come quite close and it can be quite scary. Lake Macquarie Council's draft cycling strategy outlines several new extensions and connections around the network, including including the missing link. With this strategy we are filling in those gaps and uh, improving cycling throughout the city. Hope too on the horizon for those who reach the end of the line on the Fernley track at Belmont. Council plans to join it to the existing track at Brooks Parade, saving cyclists a daunting dash across the Pacific Highway. But while pavements in the works in suburbia, some tracks in the Glenrock Wilderness are set to be scrapped. National Parks has found a number of routes not mapped or approved under the Glenrock Plan of Management, which it claims are threatening endangered ecologies and species. There are quite a lot of tracks in that area. You've got no idea until you actually get out there and look at them. Glenrock's only about 500 hectares, so, so this number, this amount of track has a detrimental impact. We would like to uh, relocate uh, the, those trails or um, trails of a similar style to a, an area of uh, less environmental impact. Kath Landers, NBN News. It's Aussie rules at the grassroots level, a chance for these promising youngsters to gain an insight into life at the top. Um, what's it like running out onto the ground for the first time for your first game? And who better to answer such questions than homegrown AFL success story Craig Bird. Obviously I'm from this area, from Nelson Bay, so it's good to come back to my home sort of area and I guess promote AFL and just talk to the kids a bit about what I've been through and some experiences. The Sydney Swans midfielder and teammate Jordan Lockyer are touring local schools to help start a new chapter for the sport in League Heartland. Obviously uh, AFL is not the biggest sport up in this area but um, it wasn't too bad. I played in Nelson Bay and had some good coaches and I was lucky to have my dad as a pretty good mentor and um, played through the juniors there and I guess I just had to keep pushing myself so I could keep up with the other kids around the, around the country. And the AFL is also pushing for improvements to Newcastle's Aussie Rules ground so it can attract more big matches. The AFL has put forward a plan to Newcastle Council to upgrade number one sports ground. While Council says it supports the proposal in principle, no money has been set aside to make it a reality. The sport is definitely growing in this area in Sydney and stuff so I'd love to see uh, more kids coming out of this area and play AFL one day. Tyson Cottrell, NBN News. It seems Surfest is enjoying a return to its glory days. Fantastic. The best result we've had since the mid-80s. This year has seen a near record number of entrants. 201 entries in the Burton Toyota Pro from 21 countries. Fantastic result. 81 entries uh, for the Hunter Ports Women's Classic. 108 entries for the Chico Pro Junior. Uh, it's just over the moon. A great response from the surfers around the world. But while organisers are over the moon, the sheer number of entrants also leaves them with a problem to solve. So with uh, the six star events, the main event is a 144 for the Burton Toyota Pro and 60 athletes for the Hunter Ports Women's Classic. So now we have to either cull those surfers down through a trials event or they have to go on a sort of a waiting list. A decision on that will be made in the next 24 hours. For those who do make the main draws, they'll be up against the cream of the crop.
Well, it was definitely an hour. To have the world, world champion coming here, uh, Carissa Moore for the Hunter Ports Women's Classic. That's the only star event she'll do in Australia. Sally Fitzgibbons is a number two seed. Of course, Joel Parkinson, Taj Barrow, Damien Hobgood, Adrian Buchan, and all the, the new kid on the block, uh, Keo Alibi from uh, Brazil, and he's the world junior champion. Ryan Callanan, Jake Sylvester, Philippa Anderson, and James McMullen all be there and uh, flying the flag for Newcastle. Surfest will be held from the 7th to the 18th of March. Tyson Cottrell, NBN News.